All right, let's finish that problem that I stopped in the middle of on the previous video. Sorry I keep doing that. I need to plan my time a little better, I guess. So anyway, we were comparing the answer from part A because we wanted to know if someone was 35 to 44, so that would be the people in the given category. Are they more or less likely to not use social media than people in general? So we just compare the answer from A to people in general. So we calculated the probability of people in general not using social media based on our sample. And now we compare the two numbers. So 0 0.288 is smaller than 0 0.362. So what that means is that people aged 35 to 44 are less likely than the general population to not use social media. So in this type of question, when they ask us to compare, we always want to compare a conditional probability to the general population. Okay, now let's talk about the general multiplication rule. So the probability that two dependent events, E and F, both occur is given by the following formula. The probability that E occurred times the probability that f occurs given that e has already occurred. So let's scroll down and see some examples because it makes more sense that way. So one of the things that conditional probabilities are used for is something we call acceptance testing. So, for example, of the 100 circuits, so our sample size is 100, sent to a manufacturing plant, seven are defective, which I will probably use bad in this problem. So the manager will select two circuits to test out of the 100. If both of those circuits work, then the manager will accept the shipment. If one of them does not work or both of them does not work, which is what the if at least one does not work means, then they're going to reject the shipment. So we're going to create something called a conditional probability tree. So here we have the first circuit that we test. So when we test it, what are the two things that can happen? Either the circuit's good, as in it works, or it's bad, meaning it does not work. So if it's good, we go and pick a second circuit. If it's bad, we still pick a second circuit. When we pick that first circuit, what is the probability that it's good? Well, the probability that it's good is, let's see, if we have 100 total and seven of them are bad, that means 100 minus seven or 93 of them are good. 
So the probability when we pick the first one is good is 93 out of 100. When we pick the first one, the probability that it's bad is 7 out of 100 because we have a pile of 100 and 7 of them are bad. Then we go and we pick the second circuit. So when we pick the second one, what can happen? Well, it can be good or it can be bad. So this gives us the outcome, good circuit, good circuit. And the other one gives us the outcome, good circuit, bad circuit. So this probability we calculated here, the 93 over 100, is the probability of first being good. And the 7 over 100 is the probability of the first being bad. Okay, once we pick a circuit, we don't, don't want to put it back in the pile. So we're going to set it aside in a separate pile and we're going to pick our second circuit. So when that happens, what is our probability that it's good going to be? Well, if we picked a good one the first time and we set it aside, there are now only 92 good circuits in the pile. And there are only 99 total circuits in the pile. And that's the probability of second good given the first was good. Okay, let's do the probability that the first was good and the second was bad. So we're going to fill in this next branch. So if we picked a good one and set it aside, there are still seven bad ones. So we still have seven bad ones, but the number of circuits we have total in the pile is 99. It's still one less. And that's the probability that the second is bad given first is good. Okay, now let's do the branch where our first pick was a bad circuit. So we do our second pick, and again, we have the same two options. The second pick could be a good circuit, or it could be a bad circuit. Either way, we have two more outcomes. We have first circuit is bad, second circuit is good. Or we have both circuits are bad. So the probability of the first being bad and the second being good, so that second good given first bad, if we picked a bad one first and set it aside, we still have 93 good circuits, but we only have 99 total circuits. Same thing, if we want to know the probability that the second one we pick is bad, given that the first we picked was bad. Okay, we already picked one was bad, that was bad, so we're down to six total bad circuits in the main pile and we only have 99 total circuits in the main pile. So now we can figure out the outcomes for each, sorry, not the outcomes, the probabilities for each of our outcomes. Two good circuits. So that's the probability of the first being good times the probability of the second being good, given that the first was good. And so that equals, we follow the probabilities we just put on the tree. 
So for the first being good, that's 93 over 100 times for the second being good, given that the first was good, we have 92 over 99. And if we crunch the numbers, that gives us approximately 0 0.864. Okay, we can do the same for all of these. So for the next one, we have the probability that the first is good times the probability that the second is bad given the first was good, which is 93 over 100 times, remember we're just, we're following the branch. So second one bad, we have seven over 99, which gives us approximately 0 0.066. Okay, moving down to the next branch, we have the first one's bad, the second one's good. So that's the probability of first bad times the probability that second is good given the first is bad, which is seven over 100 is the probability that the first one's bad times 93 over 99, which is the probability that the second one was good if the first one was bad. So again, we get 0 0.066 approximately. For the last one, we have the probability that the first is bad times the probability that the second is bad given that the first one we picked was also bad. So that equals seven over 100 times six over 99. And if we put that in the calculator, we get 0 0.042. So what is the probability that the shipment is accepted? So remember, the shipment is only accepted if both of them work. So shipment is accepted if both work. So the outcomes, if we use our letters where both work, the only one we have is G, G. So the probability of that, as we calculated up above, is the probability that the first is good times the probability that the second is good given the first was also good. And since we've already calculated that is approximately 0 0.86, whoops, sorry, 64. And we'll stop this video here and we'll do another example in the next video.